the Black Mind Games podcast. My name is Jeff. Joining me this week is Josh. I'm here. There's no Alan this week. He's busy crying because Toronto uh, Maple Leafs lost the series. Or he's doing some other doing some no, other no, shit. No, 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 no. He... He's crying because the Toronto Maple Leafs lost. You know. And as a fellow uh, sure. Leafs fan, I can emphasize with him. Look, but you know no, what? Look, he's crying. He's crying because the Vancouver Grizzlies lost. No, he's crying because the Maple Leafs lost. They played today, so. Oh. Yeah. And, you know, and I now, reference and, an old. And now he's. I reference, I reference an old defunct basketball band. Uh, or basketball, but basketball group. I, I guess he's now also watching the Oilers game. I, I, I couldn't really get at what he was doing. He said he was watching his phone. So me being Canadian, I assumed that he was watching the two most important things, which is the hockey games. So we're assuming oh, I, right I, now, and in order to protect ourselves from losing more co-hosts, we brought on the one man who will take payment in Tomboy ad pictures. <laughs> wow, I just throw a move us like that. I wow. mean, I'm the one who supply you with the Tomboy ad pictures. I'm this your is, dealer. This is true. This is true. <laughs> I was wondering what I was walking into when I jumped into the chat room, and now, now I fully understand. Now you're like, I should leave. Join Wartio. <laughs> no, become one of us. Just search spam with the pictures. One of us. One I mean, that us. can be arranged. <laughs> that oh, can boy. literally be arranged. So hold on. Give me a second. There we go. Oh. Uh, this. So, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 I don't have a lot to talk mm. about this week. I mean, we could talk about how I got you a shiny in Pokemon Arceus right off the bat. I mean, Josh had a fucking aneurysm, Ben. I don't know if oh, you watched I... our stream. Oh, did you clip that? You should clip that. I'm going to clip it right now. I've been trying to play Cause... Pokemon Arceus all week, and but I don't own a Switch, but my brother Warren does. And I keep asking him, like, yo, can I use your Switch? And he's like, yeah, 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 I'll get it to you. And then the day goes by, and then he just doesn't get it to me even though he's never using it and i'm like yo can i get the switch the next day and the next day and the next day and it's literally been a week i've been asking him and he still hasn't done it it's, it's, it's like a meme now i message him like yo am i gonna get that switch anytime soon and then he just laughs at me and then doesn't do it god damn it yeah just, you should just I'm like i want to i want to play you should literally go go to his house take it and just go hey thanks I, he lives in the same house <laughs> as me oh yeah just take it and go thanks it's in his room <laughs> That's rude. Bust down the door. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so I like. I'm trying to find it right now. Oh ah, man, it was towards the end, definitely. But it was like hour four. I mean, that was a three-hour live stream. Oh, I mean, towards the end, definitely. But yes, like fucking Arceus. Like Jeff is just starting, and he and of course Jeff never touches it. Other than the stream, so he's still early in the game. I and mean, fucking, he's... okay, yeah, okay, I found it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we're playing the game, and Jeff is doing his usual thing of exploring. And I always, I, I constantly give him ideas of like, hey, maybe you should do some hey, more Jeff, quests. Maybe you should solve this problem, okay? Because you, you should do more quests, because uh, you know you get, you can actually get mounts, and you can ride around to different areas in the in the game, and you're like, oh, let me explore for a bit. I'm like, no, but, but there's literally nothing here, and you have to go forward. Oh, let me explore. I'm like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. But at the very least, I have knowledge of where in the fuck of all the good shit is, so I at least point them in the right direction. I'm like, well, go this way at least, and. Uh, <laughs> And fucking, I told him to go in the direction of like, oh, if you want uh, uh, Mime Jr., go all the way down there. And of course, we've got all the way down there. We got some Mime, we got a Mime Jr. or two. And then we're like, all right, well, Jeff is still, you know, manning the controller. And he's like, oh, I'm going to walk up this way and keep exploring. And as he was exploring, going up left from the map, uh, he, he turned his camera just you know, like 10 degrees to the left, and I saw a flicker of a golden Luxo, and I'm like, is that a fucking shiny? And he just whipped your camera back around. We're like, that's a fucking shiny. Wow. And... 
What luck? Well, it's a, yeah, I mean, here's the thing. In Arceus, I feel shinies are so much easier to get in that game. So I don't know. Like, it's something about the math, I'm sure. Hold on. I got to find how what tomboy it is. I also am creating the clip right now. <laughs> yeah, like it's a long clip, though, of me basically uh, like for freaking out. Oh, my God, you got a shiny. That's awesome. And then slowly starting to realize that Jeff has fucking five. I had a Badoof army. Water. I had a Badoof <laughs> army and you ruined it. You bastard. You ruined my Badoof army. You have five water types and one type that wasn't fucking water. Yes, but that's all you need. It was a flying type against a fucking electric thing. Uh, that's <laughs> all you need. No, there was a Shinx in there. <laughs> yeah, but that thing was long past dead. I mean, whose fault is that, Josh? <laughs> Yours, technically. No, you killed it. Oh, sure. Sure, I did. Oh, fucking just like and also it's like, oh, we could just resurrect these guys. Let's get some revives and we can't make them. <laughs> oh, God, it, it keeps getting better and better. And finally, I just broke down into like I had to keep running away from the thing, get closer to it creepingly and then just throw a fucking ball at the back of his head. So Josh was doing the creep the entire time. Yeah, well, I'm I taking like, well, I'm taking a shit in the bathroom. Yeah, I was literally manning the ship and going like, fuck, we have to. I want him to have this because it's so bad. Do you want to see this bullshit parade that Josh went on? Sure. Probably has to see it. Okay. Oh, fuck. You can, I, I will pay you in tomboys. Okay, Ben? Just oh, giving me more, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could give you I could give you memes. Just like, memes are good too. Yeah. <laughs> what? Fucking this clip. Look at this clip. Now I'm watching it. I'm just <laughs> listening to my excitement. Josh, Josh having an aneurysm while playing a fucking <laughs> video game. <laughs> that's what I do. There. I was expecting a DM, so I was like, wait, where is it? <laughs> oh, yeah, you <laughs> the fucking wrong thing to do. Is it an alpha two? No. no, that's a small one. Yeah, dude, you should have clipped it longer. Or is it only a minute? It's only a minute. Oh fuck! You should. We should. I'm not sure if you saved it anywhere else. <laughs> fucking the whole thing. It was like three minutes of me trying to f f reconcile how to fucking catch this damn thing. I mean, I could. I could just make it that, and then post. It. So wait, is the is the alpha the was the normal color? Because I can't even tell yeah, that so, it's a shiny. Oh, uh, if you go back in the clip, uh, there is no on, alpha. Let me click on. It. Yeah, there is no. So alphas, you can tell because their eyes are bloodshot red, They're like glowing. They want to murder you, and uh, they want to murder you. And also, there's very, very, very much bigger. Yeah. Okay. So very scary. It is that bigger one that's over there, but the small one is the one that's chasing him. Yes. Y yeah. Okay. So the shiny one is the yellow. Okay. Okay. That's why I was confused because I thought you meant that the smaller one was the shiny. And I was like, wait, what? Yeah. So that's the thing. It's like Jeff was trying to get the attention of the shiny, but he was, <laughs> I'm not sure what his plan was in the first place, but he was kept trying to I was get tired. rid of the. <laughs> I was tired. <laughs> okay. That's what was happening. Uh, but <laughs> but basically, like the the bigger uh, Luxo. Yeah, like that. That was the shiny that we're trying to get. But of course, as we're going into it, as I'm starting to realize Jeff has fucking five water types going up against a fucking electric type and a flying. Which didn't help. <laughs> And me losing my shit and trying to reconcile how to fucking do this. And I eventually got it. 
just by constantly throwing balls at it and trying to hide constantly. So Josh is having like this fucking aneurysm and trying to like he's like basically gone bonkers. Yeah, yeah. And here's the funny thing. At the time that I was looking, like, you know, before we saw the shiny, I was look <laughs> we we're looking at your team and you have like several B-doofs and all this shit. I'm like, we should go back to town and like, get, you know, get, get rid of better your better team. And I'm like, ah. Get anything other than B-doofs. <laughs> and the fucking, <laughs> the shiny shows up and it's electric and it fucks our shit. <laughs> like... You know, you know, Josh. Sounds like you just don't like Pokemon. I, I gotta say. <laughs> I, I like how, I like how that gets the fucking laugh out of you, and then it's just like I can hear like underneath your breath, like I'm gonna fucking kill you, motherfucker. <laughs> it's just, it's just I making these big fucking. I'm yelling into the fucking mic about like we could have lost this and you go I clearly understand that you hate this you hate this game entirely I'm like no <laughs> oh fuck Ben do you agree with me Ben Ben do you agree with me agree with you about what Josh hates Pokemon <laughs> no I think Josh is incredibly lucky when it comes to Pokemon Go apparently he has all the shinies in that I th I think what happens in Pokemon Go is that if you travel and you have an auto catcher, odds are you're gonna get a shiny. Like it's just it's like if when you're in a certain area and you stay there, you're not gonna get anything. But if you at least travel a lot and you have an auto catcher, you're gonna get a shiny. It's just you have to play the odds. Uh. And like, and another thing is like, uh, yeah, like you have to do certain things if you want it. Like maybe try to increase your chances, like put out lures and shit or have incense but at the same time it's like it's just playing the numbers it's like you have to just go through the hoops and like go out do walks do whatever go to a spot where you know it spawns or something and just pray to jesus that you get one sometimes you get one in a week sometimes you don't get one at three weeks sometimes you get five in a day that happened to me which was fucking nuts like <laughs> it was such a good day like holy shit <coughs> ah. Well, damn. But uh, yeah, and also in Arceus, I think it's kind of the same thing like in Pokemon Go because you're running into so many Pokemon and you're just going out exploring and doing whatever the fuck you want. I think you're just running the numbers over and over and it's just like, oh, there's your shiny. It's like, there it is. What, <laughs> if you notice it, sometimes it will show up. And if you don't hear that sound, you can just easily miss it. That's why what me and Jeff were so excited when we saw that, because it's like you could have easily missed it entirely and not seen that shiny. And yeah, like, although, again, I if you're hunting for shinies and you're keeping your ears peeled, it feels like that game is very easy to get shinies somehow. Mm -hmm. Although for my amount of time playing that game, uh, I am pretty sure it'd be like every two gameplay sessions three or maybe like three gameplay sessions i may be fine if shiny but that would be like like three to four days of like you know it, if i have decent four hour sessions of playing the game which is pretty good although uh i've been doing the methods of like going a massive massive raids which is a whole fuck ton of shit is spawning. Go to these certain areas where shit is spawning and pray to Jesus that one of them is a shiny, maybe. Or the ones that's going to replace it going to be a shiny because it's rolling the dice each time it's spawning in more Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And like, yeah, that's and also uh, what was the other thing? The time distortions that can also sprout a shiny. Very convenient. Oh, that is. Very conveniently, although sometimes I for me, I never seem to get a shiny in those, but I get shinies and massive, massive raids, which is. I think it's inducive of like, you know, again, the numbers. So, yeah, like if you want to if you want to get shinies, Pokemon Go, sometimes that's easier. And Arceus, I would say that's also easier. It seems like the mainline games are just the ones that are fucking hard it seems like you just never feel like if ne you never see a shiny unless like you're just hit by lightning somehow i mean being hit by lightning is not the worst thing in the world I'm, i'll rather get a lottery ticket that's the same odds nah nah 
No, lottery tickets are gay. <laughs> uh, how many, uh, what's the percentage of gay on a lottery ticket? Uh, like 0% gay. <laughs> so wait, uh, so how is it gay? I'm just saying they're gay. <laughs> okay, There's then. no scientific standard for how gay a lottery ticket is, Josh. Okay. Okay, fine. Because I thought you'd just be like, make up some dumb numbers and be like, okay, yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> yeah. Make some dumb, shitty numbers. There we go. And the number is zero. <laughs> the number is uh, yep. Captain Anderson from Mass Effect. Anyway, I, yeah. And also, I implore you, Jeff, get a, get the a whole, get the whole three, four minutes of that clip of Funny Not Shiny. I will edit it out and upload it to Rumble and then pe- link it in the podcast. Yes, because man, that whole time, the whole four, three, four minutes, it's kind of gold. Is it? Is it gold? <laughs> yes, and me just freaking out. <laughs> uh, hmm. Freaking try to. Also, the last time that I played Arceus at your place, I fucking got like three shinies the like in one sitting, mm-hmm. which was actually kind of really good. So you're just yeah. stupid lucky then. Yeah, I, at Jeff's house, <laughs> only at Jeff's house. Like, uh, sure, I get shinies at my house, but not as good as Jeff's house. I'm, I don't know what the hell's going on there. I'm pretty <laughs> sure there's something going on at my house. You have a horseshoe stuck in the floorboards, I guess. I have a horseshoe no, stuck in my no, ribs. No, no, no. This is Canada. We put loonies in our ice rinks to help for luck. So there's clearly <laughs> a bunch of loonies stuck in the floorboards. Do I have a do I have a loony stuck in my butt? I mean, only at my place, I guess. I don't know who's putting it there. Because, <laughs> like, when I have luck for pulling cards and pulling whatever, it's like, man, you get all the luck. And it's like, uh, yeah, it's a horseshoe. I've been <laughs> surgically implanted in my ass. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> get all that good shit. You know, when you say about the horseshoe implant, I think it actually reminds me that in my old house, there was a, a horseshoe over the back door of my house. Like it was like nailed up there. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I don't know. It was like a tradition thing where like, oh, you do that to like for good luck or whatever. But like it was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, if I remember correctly, because I think there was a, a thing about it on a TV show or something. But it's like you want to place a horseshoe uh, like a cup going upward so you can collect the luck that's supposedly falling or some shit. Mm. And you want to tack it up above a door. And that's where you're supposed to put it. And if you put it upside down, that means it's it's you're not going to have good luck ever. Oh, it was definitely so it was not like, cup up. It was definitely cup down. Maybe that's why the that house sucked, Dick. <laughs> that's why you got to flip the you got to flip the horseshoe. So you, you put up for M, but got to put up for W for Wombo. That's what you forgot. <laughs> well, then. Now we know why that house was so w for dog Wombo. shit. I hated that house. <laughs> That's why it was so shit. <laughs> yeah, there, there, if there was one thing about that fucking house that was the worst, it was literally like dust would like collect on everything in like hours you would dust everything and the next day it would have a thick grain of it over top of it it just nothing left that house it just couldn't weird yeah i think the the airflow in the house is just fucking dog shit because one of the things that really sucked dick was in the summer when it was so hot even though we had like an ac unit installed the house just had hot spots where like it was just incredibly hot in some areas and it also probably was the fact that because the house was built in the fucking like, like, you know, I think it was like early 60s or something. They probably had like dog shit, you know, uh, insulation. So that probably didn't help either. But, uh, mm. man, uh, that house is rough to live in. And I grew up in that house for like 20 years of my life. It was oh, shit. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Dude, I, I know thought. there's some people that like are like super don't want to leave their child at home. They love it and everything. I was like clawing at the bits to get the fuck out of that place. When we bought this new place that I'm at now, I was like, yo, let's get the fuck out of here. I hate this house. And they're just and my mother's like, yeah, you know what? Let's get on to newer and better things. Newer <laughs> and better houses. Mm-hmm. There's memories in this house, but this house just no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, I also do remember my house being quite hot during the summer, but then finally my dad got central air and that, it act drastically changed the, the temperature in the house quite a lot. Uh, fuck it. It's basically just a giant AC unit on the side of our house and it's going through the air ducts type of thing. Mm-hmm. And just just that changed from like, oh, this house is hot and gross and like you got to put a fan in front of you or else you're just going to fucking feel like going to pass out from the, the heat yeah. to, oh, this house is like several degrees colder than the outside and you feel better. <laughs> like, yeah, that's not much of a difference. That's pretty much what we did for that house, except for some reason, like it didn't do a whole lot. <laughs> like it definitely kept it so that like you weren't like 90 degrees in the summer anymore, but it didn't get below like 78. Like, it just didn't happen. Yeah. And I don't know if that was just because, like, that particular, like, thing was too small or, like, the ducks in the house were terrible or what. But I I also have, like, vivid memories of the dogs that we had in that house. During the summer, would lay in front of the vent in the, the summer and would let the cold air, like, flow on their face. Mm-hmm. And they would just sit there all day long. See... Right now, the only problem I have with this place is that I want to get two air conditioners for two separate levels of my house. So my roommate, who is my roommate, uh, has he likes it way colder, I guess. No, he uh, he puts a he has an air conditioner in his room. Uh huh. So I want to get an air conditioner for my room, and then I want to get an air conditioner for the main floor. And the reason why is because I realized that uh, I won't use it all the time, but uh, I like my house nice, uh, cool, risky, uh, 22 degrees. In Freedom Units, that is... Uh, hold on, let me uh, look it up. I have to do the conversion. Uh, f- it's it's, no, it's, no. it's, it's uh, 22 burgers per, uh, <laughs> per Fahrenheit. It's 71. That's pretty cold. That's not cold. 22 degrees Celsius? Yeah. Uh, my house right cool. now is 24. 26 Ew. is the average. Yeah, normal, uh, yeah normally uh, we do like 20, 24 or 25, I guess, for you guys. So that'd be like 76 here. Mm. Um, but, uh, you know, during the winter, like we keep it a lot colder. We usually do like whatever 70 is for you. So like what? 21. Yeah. Like 21. Okay. okay ben, I got a tomboy boy for you. Oh, we're still doing this, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The gag never ends. The never ends. Oh wait, hold on. I sent it to you twice. Shit. <laughs> God damn it. This one's not from that stupid, uh, discord. You can thank me later. Yeah, that looks Not old from school. the stupid Discord. I mean, it's from Gundam Seed. Oh, yeah, it is old school then. But yeah, no. Uh, yeah, no. So speaking of tomboys, we got to talk about Halo, the television show. Oh, boy. They did a sex scene, finally. <laughs> Why, what Mass Effect Why? has been missing this whole time? Because uh, they don't... The fact that you the called it Mass Effect really hurts. <laughs> because at least the Mass Effect can do it good. I mean... Well, the Mass Effect TV show is going to be made by Amazon. And, I swear uh, to God, you t- take that back. It is. It is going to be made by Amazon. Please don't kill me. I will get you proof. My rage is unending. Is oh, is They're it not, they, that when they I, need to keep their grubby motherfucking paws off of an actually semi-decent written series of video games. What I want them to do is go hard cartoony, but more like I want the, like one of the main characters or the side characters to be a total xenophile, like he's fucking aliens all over the place. I just and want like, I just want a good Warhammer series. That's all I want. I basically, I want a. I want to uh, be able to look Alan Denmark. in the eyes and then watch as like and then say the name of the series, 
and watched the tears slowly roll down his eyes as his favorite franchise gets destroyed into ruin. Well, I look what'll... forward to the... Ep- I look forward to the episode where the Inquisitor in question fucks a towel randomly for no apparent reason. I'm really disappointed that you've linked this to me. I'm really upset. You're really upset that <laughs> Amazon's making a, uh, a Mass Effect TV show? Why, Ben? Why would you be upset? Because look at Halo. I mean, Halo's made by Paramount. It doesn't matter. What was the last thing Amazon made as a TV show? That was... Uh, the- Good. <laughs> I'm sorry of saying good and Amazon together, but just, just you know. Uh, Clarkson's Farm, which is Jeremy Clarkson doing his own TV show, and Amazon's the distributor of it. Grand Tour, which again is Jeremy Clarkson, James May, and Richard Hammond. Okay, what was the like the last fantasy show that they did? Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. Yeah. Um, there you go. That's why I'm concerned. I mean, you have really good reason to be concerned. I, <laughs> uh, I look forward to, I look forward to the bullshit parade that happened with uh, <sighs> Star Wars Episode Eight. Again, Christ. it's gonna be great. I really, really do not like what is coming. Like the fact that like they they realize that that video games is um, popular, and they're like, "Oh man, video games are popular. We should probably capitalize on that." And it's like, no, because you like just not because the video games stories are the way they are for a fucking reason, and it's because there's interaction. And you can also make it longer than movies and TV shows. Like you can't, you can't just jam pack Halo story in a th- you know f- half an hour every fucking or an hour every fucking day. So is this the part where I say I d- I haven't watched this episode yet because I like heard about what happened and it was like, yep, no, I'm kind of out. No, I don't blame you. I mean, there's there's been a lot of shows that like you know I hit that point. I was like, you know what, I'm I'm done. This isn't worth it anymore. <sighs> I mean, yeah, no. I the reason why I uh, the reason why I'm not watching it is because like I watched episode five and this was such a good highlight that the last four episodes seemed like such a slog. The last episode was actually quite good because the last episode was basically like, hey, here's a Halo side story involving two characters that you don't really care about. But then we want you to care about. Yeah, we want you to care about them, but you're not going to care about them. And it's like, man, I wish that this was an actual like I wish this was the series. Mm, Like part of me. I don't know. It doesn't really even look like Halo, like watching like the highlights from like I was watching. I think I was watching Angry Joe's uh, thing about it. Right. And it doesn't even look like Halo. There's literally nothing about the Halo show that looks like Halo to me. There is Halo aesthetics thrown in like the spartan armor looks pretty damn close to halo yeah but like there's a scene where she's holding a gun and it's a fucking revolver and it's literally just a fucking like Gold uh revolver. yeah just a modern revolver and it's like yeah. the rhino or whatever it looks dog shit it's like what this wouldn't be in halo she would use a fucking halo fucking it, would, it, it should be a magnum well, not even the Magnum, because the Magnum is not, like, civilian issue. They have this, like, this smaller, like, pistol from the games that would be suitable for a civilian. It's just, just model that one. It's not that hard. Yeah. It's just yeah. annoying that, like, they, they take the... Do you know what the reason that that gun's probably in that? It's probably because they have a fucking deal with the gun company. They keep put their gun in shows. It's like it's like the reason why the Chevy Tahoe's and... Halo. Exactly. They have these yeah. fucking dumb goddamn brand deals to advertise shit. And it's like, so it's like they put the gun in, like, oh, what's the gun in that woman's using? And they say, Google it. And it's like, oh, I can actually buy that gun. It's like, no, fuck you. Do actual props. Stop trying to make money and do, do right by what you're trying to produce. It's so fucking annoying. I hate it. It's one of the big, my biggest pet peeves with this fucking, like, current era of, like, movies and TV and shit. They're more concerned 
with shoveling shit at us in a consumerist way that we can't even fucking afford. Who could afford a fucking Rhino revolver anyway? I mean, I could. Yeah, you could, but you live in Canada, so you probably can't even have one anyway. No, I can't because I'm because <laughs> Canada doesn't let us have guns. Uh, exactly. You so know it's people. like the people in America can't afford these fucking guns, and it's like you put these niche garbage guns anyway. The Rhino. The Rhino revolver is actually fucking trash. Anybody that actually likes guns hates that fucking gun because it's trash. It's a bad gun. And it's shoved in this shit and in media and everywhere because they spend all this money to try to get people to buy their shit gun that's overpriced and garbage. And then it's I just mean, like... I mean, if I may... Yes. The, the, the problem with that and the problem with that entire series is that... You get to the first episode, and the first episode's like, here's your cake. Do you want your cake? And you're like, yes, I would like my cake. And you, it's literally just action, like, for 20 minutes. Nonstop action. And there's things about it where it's like you, you watch, like, a bunch of rebels use miniguns that's, like, doesn't work at all against the Covenant Shields. And then you watch Chief pick up the minigun, and it works fine against the Covenant Shields and shreds them to pieces. Like there's conceptual problems with that actual show. Why? Yeah, this is this is like one of the, the the problems. Like obviously they didn't fucking like bother to read the source material, and the second thing is, is they don't even bother to keep consistency in their writing either. That's a, that's like the other fucking problem with these TV shows. They l- literally just shoot scenes as they like, get yeah, looks fucking badass, print it and go, and it's like, but you're yeah. fucking retarded. And John Wick, John Wick actually did the best thing. John Wick, they would actually count the amount of bullets that would be in the magazine. So every single time John Wick shoots and has to reload, they would make sure that John Wick is reloading either a half full mag or full mag. Like, they thought about that stuff. They don't think about that stuff in the show. One of the most, one of the best episodes is literally the episode where you, like, the episode before episode six? Episode five. Um... That episode literally is like 10 minutes dialogue, 20% action. Like, it's it's very much like hit the ground running and go. And it's like, that's kind of what people want. Like, part of me thinks that like the problem with the Halo TV show is like, yeah, you can make it non-canon, but like make it non-canon for a good reason. This is not a good reason at this point. Or like, actually... I don't know, man. Like the new, the way that modern media does world building too is awful. Yeah, because it's either they don't do any at all, and they need you to supplement the material outside of the show, or they do this exposition dump that bores people. And it's like there's ways to world build without exposition dumping. It, dumping. It's not that difficult. Hmm. Yeah. Personally speaking. I personally would have appreciated a show where the first episode was keep the first episode entirely the same, cut the entire dig site scene scene, have it where Halsey is sitting there and she's like, yeah, we, we kept the Spartans memories for a reason. And like make it very obvious that all of the Spartans are fundamentally broken and then show midway through the scene, Quan's dad rushing, bringing a baby to, the Spartans because he's a rebel and he's like, no, I'm going to fight and passing it off to chief as chiefs, like getting like evac or something like that. And then just watching like master chief go like, okay, what the fuck do I do? Like that would be interesting character moments. Do something interesting with the characters that you have make Quan noble six. Why don't you? That's actually really cool and interesting as a character plot. Yeah. But I don't think that that, really like links to what they're doing no not at all no i mean like in like even regular lore like how how could kwame noble six um you set the show like sometime before oh you're you're proposing an entire rewrite and then yeah and then give a player character that normally is ambiguous an actual character yeah so like you you show like you sit there and you say like hey we know like sit there and say like hey this isn't canon like the stuff that pisses me off about the show is like 
there are strong female characters a part of John's squad. Yeah. Like, yeah. if they read the fucking books, they would know that. Yeah. Like, why the hell is Fred not Varric? Or just... Like, it's literally just a name change. Yeah, they just needed to fucking read Fall of Reach. That's all they needed to do. But no, they're too, too fucking lazy and just wanted to make the goddamn show. Yeah. Oh, I feel like we could rant about this all fucking day of just, like, how I, bad current directors are. I, I, I honestly wish that, like... I honestly am looking forward to Halo season two where it's just a square. Cause last week we saw like what the monitor looks like and the monitor looks mediocre. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But oh, dude, I don't know, man. Like they fucking missed the plot. They have master chief fucking, um, the other thing is the armor. They don't ever, like, actually have uh, the armor on, like, ever. I feel like they're all, they, they don't want to, like, put in the effort of, like, having good costumes. And they try to CG everything. And then it's just like, but the point is, like, Spartans, like, live in their armor. Like, come mm -hmm. the fuck on. Like, well, they're all in their <laughs> undersuits. Yeah, like, I mean, it's fine if, like, you know, you rock the industries 90% of the time. That's fine, too. But, like, yeah. I feel like they've just taken him out of the armor to get him out of the armor and then give it, give it to some random-ass actor and then just be like, oh, look, he's Master Chief. It's like, no, no. he's fucking not. He's he's not he's not John 117. He's, he's an actor trying to play John 117 and playing really badly with a script. Yeah, and I, that's probably, like, half the director's fault. I wouldn't say the director. I would say this is the writer's. Yeah, well, no, it's it's the writer's fault, and then the director is directing poorly to create the character. Because in the end, the director has to direct the actor into create, in the, in the, giving them the right, like, oh, okay, you're getting close, you know, maybe do a little more of this, and then they get it into, they find, they find the groove of what the character should be. Yeah. Josh, have you watched, are you going to watch the Halo TV show? No. And for me, no. watch is a loose term considering apparent, you know, I, the way I watched, um, whatchamacallit, um, Batwoman was I watched it through reviews. Is the same way I'm doing with this? I mean, why would you watch <laughs> anything Batwoman related? True. Or anything CW at I this mean, point. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I know who that show was made for. And let me tell you, it ain't us. It, no, it ain't. It's not for the shush. person that I make fun of when I when they come into the store and they go, they go, um, yes, I would like to buy this video game. And your manager, who's from India, goes, oh, yes, I will get it for you. And they're like, actually, I want to go through him. And they point to me. And then your manager goes, what are you, racist? And then just watches as like the single, like the look of fear and shock comes through their eyes. It's, it's those are what those shows are designed for. Those people, the people that are very easily like hurt and destroyed. Every time I like watch, like I sometimes I see clips of like The Flash, right? And like whenever they like they have a sad scene, it's like always the same thing, and it's just like, man, this is like. Did they just recycle scenes? Do these actors yes. not, how, not know how to act sad anymore? Yeah. Anyways, I look forward to when Josh watches um, Halo. We'll force him somehow. Oh, that's, you're going to fucking Donnie Darko him, huh? No, I'm not going to Donnie Darko him. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sit there and I'm going to give him... a. am going to hire a prostitute. Uh-huh. To... Hell, and then Josh is going to go to the prostitute and he's going to go, okay. And then the prostitute is going to turn on the light and then all of a sudden it's going to be Halo at the TV show and she's going to be like, let's watch my favorite television show. And Josh is going to be like, oh no. You've got some really convoluted ways to hurt people. I mean, it's not hurting people. If I wanted to hurt Josh, I would make a review show like uh, Red Letter Media and say, Josh, you have to watch this television show now. Oh no! I have to watch TV. 
I mean, I could make him watch Owl House. He'll probably enjoy that. Oh, actually, I heard good things about that. I mean, it looks pretty good, too. And uh, the Alf Amphibia or, base. If, if, you, if you really want to hurt people our age, Jeff, just make them watch, like, 90s TV. Like, sit them down and make them watch, like, Home Improvement or something. I mean, oh, fuck oh, yeah. That'd God. be pain, painful nowadays. Oh. Yeah, dude, 90s sitcom comedy. Oof, that's that's pure torture. I used to watch that shit, but now I'm thinking about it. And I'm like, oh, wait, that's that shit's probably unwatchable at points. Yeah, dude, that was a different time. Like, that's one of those ones yeah. where it's like, like comedy just evolved. And like, you look back at that, and it's like, man, that just does not age. There's some of them, like, I think are still can be funny. Like, I'm pretty sure if you rewatch, like, uh, um, Fresh Prince or, like, uh, uh, Everybody Loves Raymond or something like that. Like, some of those ones are still funny. But, like, I feel like, oh, of course. Seinfeld's is, still hilarious. I was literally about to say Seinfeld was always garbage, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Fuck you. Seinfeld is garbage. So is Friends. You both can go kill no. yourselves. No, Friends no, is garbage. Friends, friends can go in the garbage pile. <laughs> Seinfeld is a weird maybe pile. Seinfeld, Seinfeld is were, literally... Is literally what you put on in the background when you don't actually want to watch something, but you want to hear people talk. Yes, exactly. That's what it's good for. <laughs> but that, that that doesn't make it a good TV show. The smelly car episode is hilarious, and so is the soup Nazi episode. Two episodes out of how many? So is Festivus. Festivus is a family classic. Three out there's of how many? Probably, okay. There's probably the puffy shirt episode. Great, fantastic. Five. Would watch again. Um, the watch. What? The watch What's is that a good one. one. The watch know. is the one where uh, Uncle Leo takes uh, Jerry's watch out of the trash that Jerry literally threw his watch in, and shows it to his parents. And his parents goes, "That looks oddly like the watch that we gave you, Jerry." <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> and Jerry's sitting there going, "I have no idea what you're talking about." He goes, "Uh." Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah, there's so much of that show. It's like, I know I watched a good portion of it. There's the episode where the, George turns purple. Where he goes to an herbal healer and he turns purple and he's in an ambulance and the guy's arguing about like the ambulance drivers are arguing about <laughs> ice cream or some shit. It's hilarious. I I actively can't remember that. That's there's, there's 180 there's so... episodes of Seinfeld, and you've named maybe like 10. Uh, there's an episode where jo- where Kramer drops a junior mint, and uh, he they're in surgery. They're watching a surgery, and Kramer's eating junior mints. There's only one junior oh. mint. There's only one Seinfeld scene that I remember that I genuinely thought was a funny situation, and it was that moment where Jerry donated to the um, to the adopt the highway thing. And he went out there and painted over the no, that's lane Kramer. lines. Uh, Kramer, yes, I'm sorry. Kramer did that, and he painted over the lane lines. They create double wide lanes and cause what's your face to fucking crash your car. Yeah, a lane the, to crash your car. Yeah, yeah, that's that's literally like one of the only like funny situations that I actually remember because I remember watching him like literally drive down with a fucking roller, just rolling black paint over the lines. And the fact that I can only remember literally one funny moment, all oh, except Soup Nazi. Soup Nazi is just obviously classic, but it's just like that's the that's the only like all obscure scene that I remember. It's better than the Big Bang Theory and Young Sheldon. Yes, you're right. Both of those are pretty fucking garbage as well. Oh, I mean, but that's not '90s sitcom. That's like mid 2000s. We're talking about '80s sitcom here with Seinfeld. Seinfeld started in the '80s. No, no, it's. Are you talking about like? Oh, I, don't even, I know Seinfeld is 90s. If you're talking about like their time, like their, I don't know, generation or something. 1989 shit? to 1998. Okay, that I was wrong. Barely counts. 89 barely counts. That's like saying I'm an 80s kid because I was born in 89. The Chinese restaurant one where there it's just them waiting in the Chinese restaurant. That one's a good one. The the contest. Do you guys know about the contest? No. You guys haven't watched the contest? Isn't that when they don't have sex? That's the one where they're not allowed to masturbate. 
Oh right. So Kramer. Yeah, it's, so so that, the that entire episode sh- actually won a that episode actually won a, like an Oscar Emmy or some shit. Yeah, and they're not allowed to mention it at all. So they can't mention that they're like they're doing a contest for sex. But the entire episode is like them talking about it, and they're saying, "Well, I bet you can't do it." Well, if you can't do it for a week, I will give you ten dollars. Well, if you can't do it for a week, I bet I can outlast you. And then it turns into Elaine saying, "Well, I'm a woman. I can obviously outlast everyone." <laughs> One, obviously. And I think Elaine's like the second or third to go. Mm-hmm. No, Elaine's the second to go. Because there's no stipulation about sex. So, yeah, that 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 was a that was a good episode. That's an Emmy Award winning episode. Because they again, they didn't even mention the word. Oh sex boy, Hollywood sucking their own dick, giving each other awards. Just what we yeah. need more of. Mm-hmm. Look, 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 look. I like Seinfeld, Ben. Just because you don't like Seinfeld, it's okay. Bad. Mm-hmm. Anyways. Shall we shall we shift gears from talking about Halo and how I hate Halo? Josh, why don't you talk about some video games you played? Uh let me double check. Cause Well, I oodled the Oilers score. Cause my week has been kind of poopy as for video game playing. I just end up getting tired when I get home and I'm like, eh. Mm, that's true. I do yeah. I get tired too. Yeah, especially with my current job of being uh, a designer, no, floor designer for uh, my car, at my trust building facility. Mm. I actually got upgraded to a new, newer and better job. It's great. I get paid more. Uh, the only thing that's weird is that, uh, again, like it's an office job. I've never had an office job ever. So this is the first office job I ever had. And I'm trying to learn the program they use for building the floors and for uh, how they design the building for weights and like how these beams go across the ground and how you need supports in certain spots and how you put the stairs in and all that junk. And now in the back of my brain, I'm just going, don't fuck it up. This is like the best thing you ever had. Don't fuck it up. This is the best thing you ever had. Don't fuck it up. I mean, that's pretty good. (laughs) Yeah. Like everything about like, again, everything about it's like it's what I'm used to on my computer. It's what I'm used to for, for like it's, uh, the program is not 3D oriented, but it's more 2D. Like you have to look at blueprint blueprints and then redo that on a 2D plane and then have the program do all the work of figuring out how all the weight. And then you, with all that weight and figure out if these beams are going to break under load or not, or if they're going to uh, do uplift or not, or do all this. There's a lot of terms going on here and fucking uh, basically just trying to make sure the house stays stable and don't implode. And then you think about, wait, people have been making houses since like, you know, forever. And you go, how do these houses in the 70s do it? How do these houses in the 50s do it? How do they do it in the 20s? Like by hand math. How do they build houses? Like, and I'm doing it by a computer and I feel hard doing it. And I'm like, oh, this shit's so tough. I'm like, wait, how does people back in the four, like 40s and 20s and 1800s? Like, how do they do that shit? I don't know. Well, you, it's, they, <laughs> you probably also have to remember that they didn't probably have as strict uh, like safety policies. So they probably those houses probably weren't rated for any kind of structural load or anything. Oh, probably not. But I mean, there's houses from like Great Britain and stuff like that that are like they've been around for like, I don't know, 1800s and stuff. Yeah, because if the floor fucked up, they would fix it. Also, (laughs) the the way that the the quality of materials is also different because they actually uh, bothered to use uh, decent wood. Also, wood is completely different than it was even like 20 years ago because all the old trees are gone. The newer trees are grown faster through, like, genetics or whatever. So when you look at the grain width in, like, wood, it's a lot wider. Where the, the older, slower-grown trees are thicker, so they make harder, more secure wood. 
Ah. So like wood That's now is literally just it's just different. Like old old it's, wood is so much more valuable because of the way that it was grown. Uh, it, it, it's it's like what it's like how like a mango back in the day was like double the energy content of a mango nowadays. A mango? Uh, Wait, what do you, what do you mean by energy content? Like like calories, like the oh. amount of calories that a mango had. Like a new mango is like plumper and stuff like that, but you'll get less energy from it. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Weird. So it's not as calorically I mean, dense as it was before. Yeah. That's strange. Just give me a give me a GMO uh apple that tastes like a banana. Just, just do it. Imagine a crunch and then you go, well, that's banana. <laughs> that would probably be super off putting. Oh, yeah. Cr- super crunchy and you chew it, you're like, that that's crunchy, and you go, that's banana. <laughs> Banana. Well, bananas oh, back was... in the day weren't as soft. They they had. There's actually a theory going around in my local friend group that's not this one. Um, uh-huh. That seedless bananas have created weak men. <laughs> yeah, bananas. To... Bananas are shaped differently too. If I remember correctly, as well, they were not like the the curve. They were literally like straight. Yeah. Yeah. They're really good for things. Yeah, like and the like, true original uh... bananas are completely different. Oh, yeah. And also the taste of bananas or uh, what was that? The drug or no, the, the banana flavoring for candy and or medicine is actually what the banana used to taste like. Yeah. So it would try banana nowadays. It's like, oh, wait, the candy flavor is what it's supposed to be. You're like, what? Like, that's that's absurd. And now it's so like subtle and low. And you're like, that's that's concerning. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I like bananas. Bananas are pretty good. I love a banana loaf. I I love banana loaf. It's real good. Put some butter on that damn thing. But actually, you toast it a little and then put some banana banana, uh, butter on it. And it's great. Or uh, or you make it with chocolate chips. That's even sinful, but delightful. Mm, I think that's a little much. I think just like I'm, I prefer nuts in mine, so like banana and nuts. Mm. Uh, yeah. But. Sorry, I was coughing. I always, I always like uh, when someone's like, "You want banana loaf?" and I'm like, "Does it have chocolate chips?" and I'm like, "Yeah, it's just terrible, but I love it." Fucking, it's give me chocolate chips and nuts. Put them both in. Make it. Make it so we have to. When you eat it, you probably bring in Satan himself and on Earth and go. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, "Is that banana loaf?" Yeah. <laughs> he takes a slice. <laughs> what other sinful thing you throw on it? Oh, pudding. Pudding is. You, you just want to die, huh? Throw, your your uh, yeah. cholesterol just be way too high. <laughs> your doctor's probably like, "God, this motherfucker, lay off the banana loaf, bitch." <laughs> Oh, man, I remember making myself a dessert, which literally my mom was in a ba- uh, baking like baked like three things in the span of like a day, like a day behind each other. So it was, we had some baking laying around and I just mixed all these baking items into a bowl and I just ate it that way. And I'm like, this is this is this is a thing I sh- <laughs> should not happen, but it's great. I feel great. <laughs> Feeling oh, fuck. I think great. I mixed. I think I mixed a cake and like a banana loaf and a fucking like, I don't know, some sort of pudding dessert or some shit. Like, I literally just threw shit in a bowl and I was like, all right, I'm good. I'm going to eat this. (laughs) Just throw shit in Uh, a bowl. (laughs) Or, oh no, recently it was, uh, I went to brother-in-law's house, mixed uh, a donut and score bar. Like I put the donut under, I put the donut in the bowl first, and then put a score bar on top of it, and I just just start cutting into it and cut into little bits, so I can have both a donut and a score bar at the same time, or a score bar cake, I mean, and a score bar cake is also super super sinful. It, if you look up how it's made, you go, oh shit, there's so much uh, caramel in it. Yeah, it is. 
and when and technically we're supposed to do with that or with scoreboard cake is like you're supposed to chill it. Mm -hmm. But hey, sometimes you're like, hey, you don't want to chill it. You just want to make it bring it to your freaking relative's house or whatever. And you just eat it right there. And that's fine, too. But you just got a lot of camera on the bottom of your uh, dish. But like you still there's still a lot of gross caramel in the, in that fucking cake. You don't like caramel? I like caramel, but here's the thing. I'm lactose intolerant. So if I eat too much milk, I explode. And what you know what's in caramel? Milk. Huh. Good things that make Josh very gassy and very farty. Yeah. I might I be slightly as well, but like I don't I'm not like one hundred percent sure on that. But uh I love caramel. I think it's great. I love salted yeah. caramel. That's what's up. Salted yeah, caramel. Yeah, that's what's good. up. Oh, man, I could talk all day about desserts. Quick, <laughs> change subjects. Uh, so Epic, uh, <laughs> Epic has continued its fail failure parade. Oh, boy, what do they do now? Uh, Alan Wake has still yet to make its money back from Alan Wake Remastered. Oh, come on. Why the fuck did they even bother? That barely sold in the first place. Why would you remaster a game that barely sold in the first place? Because Alan Wake's good. <laughs> It's barely, it's, it's, it's meh. It's meh at best. It's a fucking six out of 10. Because control was, control was so amazing that they had to make us Alan Wake too. Cause they couldn't let everyone have all the funds. They needed somebody to make Alan Wake too, which is just Alan Wake remastered. They are making an Alan Wake too, by the way. So, yeah, Epic uh, has continued to failure. Um, yeah. I mean, as long as Alan Wake 2 somehow gets made. I mean, yeah. I like Alan Wake. Alan Wake's good. I don't know, man. I, I it's like just Alan, all right. I like, Honestly. I like the universe. Yeah. I like the universe that that's, game was in. That's the thing. Is like That's the show I want. I, wanted, I want a TV show about Alan Wake. Yeah. Like, I don't want... Or, Actually, for me personally, a TV show I would want that's kind of video gamey, not really. Uh, it's the uh, the the website SCP. Oh yeah. That serve yeah that that was a serve contain protect. Mm -hmm. I want a TV show just based off of that website, but it's not necessarily about the monsters. It's about the fucking scientists of the building. Because they're like, if you like go through the lore of that website and like oh this is files about the you know about the monsters sure and then even the shows can touch on like oh these scientists have to do these tests on this monster and maybe even explain about it and do like the lore stuff about it that'd be cool but i'm like but i want, want more comedy aspect about that i want more like oh these you follow two or three scientists you they're each have their different personalities they're huge nerds and they're just trying to get by and not die they're just like, okay, we got a job to do. We trying to learn about this, uh, forget, uh, <laughs> this certain monster, 1111. Uh, apparently he can teleport at will. We don't know why. And, uh, hopefully he just doesn't kill us. <laughs> like, I just want these scientists shitting themselves every time they go into a room with an SCP and going, okay, well, hope we don't die. <laughs> Is like, Alan Wake an SCP want... thing? No. Yeah, t I mean, well, technically he is because in control, the there is a hidden Easter egg where the building is in a tornado or something. If you look out the windows, you can see the building where Alan Wake was in. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, oh, they're in the same universe, but like control. You know, control is the opening overworld universe where like every single series like Remedy does, like they have had uh, Max Payne basically be in like Alan Wake has written Max Payne. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So they had this overlapping lore yeah. on top of lore. Whereas <laughs> like, like in neat. control, like Max Payne is a TV series or something like that. And then like Alan Wake is like literally like a manuscript that like it's a pocket dimension basically where it's like controls universe can interact with like Alan Wake's universe. Wow. That's fucking weird. Mm. Uh, Quantum Break is like the funniest one because Quantum Break is like, yeah, there's like a device in here that like was used for these things. Like the control universe is like the overworld. 
Oh, is Control actually linked with the other ones? I think so. <laughs> I don't I know like for this sure. Idea. I like this crazy idea of like you're constantly pull, folding in other fucking weird IPs together somehow. Well, the problem with like the problem with that shit is like Control like doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, when you're dealing with like multi-dimensional slash that's why it doesn't universe. make sense josh yeah i know like when you deal with that it gets to a point of like what makes sense anymore nothing does i mean that's like, true what, <laughs> like when you get to a point of like you hitting that threshold of everything nothing like everything makes no sense then yeah everything makes no sense almost like there's no point to it so it's like yeah they just get by and do as much as you can yeah, basically. <laughs> I get like for uh, yeah for Alan Wake and like I'm like I want Alan Wake too, and I like man I I think it'd be so rad if there was a TV like again TV series maybe TV series Alan Wake, but then I'm like man I just want and my my real goal is like man SCP TV series and maybe play it like a bit of a comedy maybe. But it still like has some scary bits in it, and you're just like, man, I hope these scientists don't die. <laughs> like, <laughs> like every episode, it's like, it, maybe this is a boring episode. Maybe this is a funny episode. Oh, this is an episode that they might die. They might die. This is the bad episode. It's unfortunate this is a- that the track record for TV is so brutally bad. Bit- I mean, his oh, fault yeah. is that bad. Uh, Hollywood, because they clearly don't know what people want. There is not as touch. I mean, as clearly. I mean, yeah, clearly it's the Americans' faults. I mean, I can't imagine. I can't imagine American corporations understanding what consumers want anymore. I mean, you're not wrong because they don't because the they then lobby the government and then the government doesn't understand what the people want and then they do that do the shit that they've been doing and then they bail them out and then it's like, oh man, I, I sure I sure love that Ford is now producing SUVs that are making money but i'm really sad that the ford is no longer making cars that i want that's or, not exactly what i was going for but okay that works well like like <laughs> like it's the bullshit parade of like uh uh the way it goes is that corporations will produce product product will fail corporations will cry about it complain to the government government will bail them out and then and then the cycle repeats itself but they don't. But the funny thing is, is that they bail out the big companies, but not also the little ones. They're just like, hmm, you're a, a sad mom and pop sh- shop that's struggling during COVID. Mm, I think I'm just going to spend 400 billion and bail out, uh, you know, Amazon. American Airlines. Yeah. Because they just but can't, that- you know, shut down for a few months during COVID. Jesus I don't know the one. The one that made me laugh was the one about. Uh, 44 billion going to Ukraine, which is a legit reason. I agree. Ukraine's a legit thing. No! We need to keep our fucking nose out of goddamn Ukraine. Let them deal with their own fucking shit. Like, I understand. Right. Like, it's a fucking tragedy that they're in this situation. But at the same fucking time, you're, like, the United Josh, States... Josh, I'm so on, sorry by up that way. ...are on the verge <laughs> of, like, f- like full-on the fucking riots. Mm-hmm. And like people are like legitimately pissed. You have so many fucking problems here, and what do you do? You piss away the money that is needed in your own country for fucking clout, and it's just it makes me so fucking mad. Uh, well, I'll explain it in two seconds, okay? Okay, sure. So the re- so the reason why they're doing that is because. The American government, Republicans and Democrats included, they don't understand that the reason why Zelensky is so popular is because Zelensky is actually like a decent politician and a decent leader. So they sit there and they see Zelensky and they go, well, if I give money to Zelensky, that makes me popular, right? And it's like, no, but that's not how that works. Yeah, I love how I saw a picture of fucking Mitch McConnell and Sarah Collins in fucking Kiev, like literally like this week. I, like- I mean... Why are you why are you there when you need to be back here literally dealing with the Roe v. Wade shit? Like fuck off. Oh god, that one's that one's even funnier. I know, like fucking fuck Mitch McConnell. And the, the funniest thing is is that they literally call Mitch McConnell Moscow Mitch. And he's in Kiev against Putin and shit. It's like what the fuck is going on? 
I my my favorite thing about well okay I'll briefly say this my favorite thing about this is like the Trudeau government is also like we're gonna give money to the corporations like gee I wonder who deserves that money not the First Nations that you fucked off for like ten thousand fucking years no 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 we can't give them a goddamn fucking cent until like until nope. they actually start complaining about shit <laughs> yep. Can't yeah, do shit. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, 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 can't, can't fucking, uh, can't fucking, uh, block the fucking corporations from buying all the houses, eh? Uh, no, 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 not allowed to do that either. Mm, fucking, no, uh, bullshit. Yeah, no, this is the political part. <laughs> I, and I hate it. I absolutely hate it. Mm hmm. I wish, I wish we didn't have to be like this. I mean, you can, we can, we can embrace the greatness. At least there's Josh. Nah, the like honestly, like I feel like the biggest solution that would fix like a lot of problems in the world is term limits. Yeah, and but then you would lose Rand Paul and payments. Like the fact that they make like a decent amount of money to be a politician is the biggest fucking scam in history. Okay, like, they, I'm gonna. I'm gonna solve your problem in ten seconds. Okay, Ben, you're gonna love this. Okay, you're gonna love right. my. The process. Yeah. Okay. Bring it on. So we introduce a vote for a hundred percent of the country, okay? Mm-hmm. And the and you ask three very simple questions, okay? And the questions are very simple. It's every single time a random selection of pol- of politicians are selected, and you go, okay, so we can't have AOC because AOC is very popular and stuff like that. So she's obviously excluded. We can't have Rand Paul because Rand Paul's popular. He's obviously excluded. Mitch McConnell's popular. He's obviously excluded from this vote. And the poll, and the poll, the vote is very simple. Do you know any senator or congressman in your area? And can you write their names down? It's also true. Yeah. And if they can't, all of the popular people are removed from... Or, or all of the people underneath the popular people are just removed and expelled. The next part of the vote is very simple. We give you um, a card and it says, says to 10 random people. So, for example, like let's say if AOC, you have 10 people in New York and then you have 10 people in Virginia. And you sit there and you say, do you approve of AOC? And what 10 people is a pretty low sample size. I, I'm just throwing out a number, okay? So, and then the amount of people, and if the majority says, no, I do not approve of AOC, AOC is not allowed to run anymore. See, I'm just using her problem. as an example. There, no, there's, there's, there's problems with that, right? The biggest and the biggest flaw with that is that uh, you have to get participation. Voter participation is already incredibly low. Um, so, like, if you try to get voter participation up for this, it's honestly not going to happen. The second problem is is that people are already so incredibly uninterested in politics that it doesn't really, like, if, if you do this poll, you're only going to get people that are interested in politics, and so they're going to know about these people that are actually going to be bother voting. So, like, the biggest thing is, is, that, is that in order to <laughs> properly, like, get the people that care about doing politics – is you can't have an incentive for doing politics. Mm-hmm. If you're paid to do politics, you get people that want to get paid. And if the payment's high enough because the politicians they can regulate their own pay, you're going to get people that want to, A, keep it for as long as possible and make as much money as possible, and then manipulate to get as much money as possible. And those are the only people that are going to end up there. So you have to remove the incentive, which is, you know, basically you're not doing it for money. You're doing it because you care about people. And then two term limits is the other thing because you can't have people that are fucking 70 years old making laws for people when the average age of the United States is 30 fucking eight. That's another reason why Zelinki is so popular because he's 40 something. Mm -hmm. He's president and he's not 20, 30 years older than the average populace of his country. He understands the plights of the people that he's governing. The problem is that these people are so fucking old and so goddamn rich. They don't understand what actual fucking things are anymore. That's why I keep saying term limits, because that's why term limits are so important. I mean, Rain Paul's the only one I actually like. Who the fuck is he? I don't even know who he is. How old is he? What political party is he? He's Republican. 
so, so he's thus, probably garbage. Cool. N- no, he's 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 the only good Republican. Mm. Okay, he's the I'll, only good one because we'll Rand, Paul also th- Rand Paul is like is like we shouldn't be investing money in Ukraine. We should. If we're going to invest money in Ukraine, we should audit it, at least ensure that makes sure it goes to the people, right? Wow, audit the government? Good luck with that. And and then the other one that he says is he's like he's like, Yes, abortion is important for a woman and stuff like that. Can you define what an abortion is? I don't think defining Oh man, the whole abortion topic is so fucking rough. I was watching Destiny talk about this shit. And it's like when you define w- like oh, levels of abortions. Or- yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole like the the is contraceptives considered part of like the abortion topic because like it's preventing it's preventing pregnancy as much as abortion is and it's just like holy shit this is a fucking like it's a dirty topic it's so fucking large but I think that what it comes down to is is that as a medical necessity abortion needs to be able to be legal and exist it doesn't yeah. and like sure. I don't think we need to define conception i don't think that's the that that needs to be a thing that we have to go through i think that the thing is is like at the end of the day and this is something that i would say is like if you okay this is this is just me saying this so you can disagree with me as much as you want i have two solutions to abortions i have a joke solution and then i actually have a serious solution okay the joke solution is is that women get a punch card (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you have, that's fucked <laughs> you have 10 get out of free jail cards for abortion you have 10 get out of free cards with abortion and if you use all 10 you get taken to a room and then you get explained to basic biology in my in my perfect world you get sterilized because at that point you don't need to be doing it anymore because you're too dumb to stop it yeah well, that that i mean i prefer the punch card method i think it's funnier that's, I'm going along with the joke. Uh, yeah, you, you, you get a punch card and at ten, you get sterilized. Yeah, yeah, well, some people might actually race towards that. That would actually be pretty funny. Yeah, that's true. Because yeah. like getting 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 willingly sterilized also is apparently incredibly difficult, even for men. Like it's like, oh, but what if your wife wants children? It's like, dude, I don't want kids. Just fucking snip my junk. Respect my wishes. It's like the same thing. It was like, why Why can't doctors just respect people? Like, if they come in and ask for a procedure, it's like, I want to have my nuts chopped the fuck off so I can't have children. And they're like, maybe you want to freeze this? Here, it's like, here, no, here, here, chop my nuts be- off. Here's a better question. Why is it that they can respect a children who, whose age is six, but they can't respect a grown adult whose age is like 27? Yeah, like before like 30, like there's no chance that you can get it. A sterilization procedure done and like there's yeah. like but what if you change your mind it's like then i fucking live with the decisions that i made fuck off it's my body let me do what i want to it yeah i personally speaking so this is my opinion on abortion okay i think that if the decision should there should be a implementation of like a time limit whether that's like two weeks three weeks I would say probably go somewhere in between the first trimester and the second trimester. Well, there's there's a super big problem with like putting early time limits on stuff because it's it's different for different people. Like I've heard stories where people have like tested over and over and over and over again up to like three weeks after they missed their period and they still get negative. And then all of a sudden on the fourth week they're like they finally get a positive result. And so it's just like if the you, second sh- trimester goes from um 14 weeks to 27 weeks yeah okay so i'm just saying like if, if you if you do it too low you're gonna get those problems of people missing the window because they never get a chance to even know oh no that's 100 percent fair that's the reason why i think women should be deciding it but the the one thing that, like i would say on that is like i say like there were there would be a caveat where it's like unless the mother's life is in absolute danger and there's no way to save the pregnancy or there is a way without actually implementing harm to the mother, then abortion is on the table a hundred percent. Yeah. Which it should be. Yes. Which is the way that it was originally intended. Yeah. And I think, I think that, um, some of the, 
some of the nuances of like what the problem is that a lot of people have with pregnancy is a lot of people are like trying to say that like babies are like uh well they don't well there's people living beings even like early conception well it's a clump of cells like it is a clump of cells when um fertilization of the egg happens the clump of cells starts spreading and changing yeah is is that not life i yeah, well, okay in like in like absolute like biological terms technically yes yeah but when you you have to think about it from like a not not just like um is it life kind of standpoint but like almost mm. like um but but I'm just saying what they're thinking <sighs> see for me personally like my personal opinion is like it's it's a it's a very difficult thing. Like, I don't really know the answer to that question. Like, to me, it's like, yeah. okay, well, this thing has a heartbeat. Okay, is that does that suddenly mean that it's alive if it survives outside the womb? Is that alive? Like, I put I put it as like when the survival rate hits a certain point. Mm-hmm. Oh, outside womb viability is like the closest that I can say that something is yeah. alive. Yeah, no, and, no, 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 that's 100% true. And that's like, I would say that probably the threshold is like 80% for me. Like, there's sure. an 80% chance that, that it could survive once it's removed, but I would consider that Ooh, a that's living low. person. Yeah, 80% is, is fairly low. But it's still like I mean we've we've done operations to save people at like on fifty fifties. That's a fucking coin flip. I and mean, people yeah. will survive that. So you, you see what I'm saying? Eighty like percent is kind of like acceptable in like a medical sense. I think. So, my my personal opinion is is that like. I, I think that women need to make the decision, and I think that this, I think the thing that needs to be said is the only thing that men get a say on is like, okay, like, do men at what point do men get to say, no, I'm leaving, I'm done. Like, I think what? if I think it comes down to that we oh, we also need to reform like the we whole need to, like, parenting whatever too because like if women get the decision to then just keep the child and the man doesn't want the child they have to be able the man has to have an equal opportunity to vote out of that obligation like yes yeah. i know it takes two people to make it but then in the, in the at the end of it a singular person gets to make the decision to continue with it because the woman all also gets the chance, to, even if the other man wants it, still has the th- has the final say in whether or not it even happens in the first place, because it's their body that they're sacrificing for the decision of the bringing the child into the life. So, if if a woman doesn't want to go through the potential harm, trauma, and whatever of birthing a child, but the man does want her to do that, she still has the option to say no. And I think that the man has to also have the option to say no if she goes upon the decision to continue with the process of having the child. Yeah. Like, here's my personal opinion on that. And, like, this might be sexist to, like, this might be perceived as sexist, but okay, whatever. My personal opinion on it is, it's like, okay, like, if you're a woman, like, what if your boyfriend one day, like, what if your boyfriend gets drunk and wakes up one day and, like, your boyfriend was sexually assaulted. Would you want your boyfriend paying for the rest of his life until like a kid's 18 years old to another woman because he got sexually assaulted? You know, what's fucking sad. I bet there's people out there that would say, yes, he has that obligation to pay for a child no matter yeah. what. And it's like, and that's it's like, fucked. I, and it's like, it's like, it's like to those people. No, you, you don't get that right to say that because it's like, we're not walking pocket book pocketbooks for you i'm sorry we're not and i will there's a lot of people that think that they they, they are but like but like if if like 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 i don't think that that's i don't think that that's a big deal of like of like 
a man sitting there saying, I don't want to be in this relationship anymore and I'm pulling out. Like, do I think that the government should then be forced to step up? Maybe. But, hey, I you know what? I feel like at the point where that decision is being made, that whatever the decision a female makes is on her. Yeah. I th- That's all I can say. Um, yeah, no. I think that that's a heady topic. So, Josh, do you think that we're done? I think so. Okay, so let's let's end on the heavy. <laughs> uh, wasn't even my intention. You're welcome. Heavy weapons guy. We we end on heavy. That's because I'm mad, I'm, I'm mad about our government. That's why. Oh, I my mean, government, I should say. I mean, that's yeah. better than what happened with Canada. Canada, we had like a uh, one NDP guy. Which, by the way, allow me to say this: fuck the NDP. You're fucking pieces of shit. You guys have a workers' revolution. You have a chance to stick it to Trudeau. And what do you guys do? We're going to bend the knees as quickly as possible. It's like, it's like, oh, okay. And then two weeks later, or no, wait, no. Less than about three months later, it comes up that the NDP are getting exactly what you want. And it's like, oh, oh, okay. Fuck you. <laughs> it, was, it was game from the start. I mean... It was like, rigged from the beginning. I mean, exactly. my personal opinion is like is like I don't hold anything against N- NDP voters, but I really don't like the NDP government. So, party, because I was like I was like thinking about like this when like they were like coming into when they were coming like the last election. I was like, eh, the NDP don't tend to really hold the liberals accountable as much as they should. Uh, so. The government holding people accountable? Yeah. I'm oh, they, sure. they love holding conservatives accountable. Hmm, maybe your government does. I wish oh. my government would hold anybody accountable. Literally anybody. I love how I saw a fucking this woman talking about like how our poverty line uh, shit is fucked up because like um they the calculate the calculate where like you get benefits or whatever. It's like it's incentivized to not get decent jobs. Yeah. And um, one of the fucking like one of the huge problems our government is is government spending is fucking rampantly corrupted. They get forty thousand dollars a year to buy furniture per senator. Wow, that's a per, lot for their office. They get forty thousand dollars to buy furniture for their office per senator. It's a goddamn joke. It's so frustrating that this shit keep is 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 happening. Like the like the the government is just so unbelievably corrupt with this bullshit. It's so frustrating. <sighs> Anyways, thank you everyone for listening to Black Mike Games podcast. I guess Ben's really upset by his government. <laughs> Again, rich people. Terrible. I mean, it would be wait. really funny having Keith and Ben in the same room and then just like sitting there and just not saying a goddamn thing. I I wish podcast. I wish for a revolution, but I don't want to be a part of it. That's the problem. That's my I mean, problem. I wish that for a revolution, too. I just hope that it doesn't fall over into Canada, which we'll probably do because you have a bunch of retards down there who think communism is great. There's already apparently people getting ready to apply for uh, political asylum in Canada if uh, the the whole abortion thing gets any worse. Please no. Please, please no. I've heard your government's preparing for it already. No, no, no. We should not accept refugees. We should uh, decline all of them. Yeah. So uh, it's just like only man, you. Only I feel you, like, Ben. I feel like at this point, like. People just need to, like, actually, like, legitimate, like, people don't realize how much power we actually have. Like, yeah, if people so actually got together and actually, like, did something about it and not being, like, like, uh, I feel like protesting is, like, not working anymore. And it's really frustrating that I have to say that. I mean, the problem with the, okay, well, I'm, I'll say this. The problem with the, um, the problem with the American government is again said early in the podcast the american government is basically 95 percent sure 70 year olds who have no idea how anything works 
uh, running the country. And now we're watching the machine fall apart and blow up in flames and stuff like that. Because 70 year olds have no idea how the country is actually run or anything like that anymore. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's happening is that you have millennials who are not fucking primarying anyone on any party. Well, we're just starting to hit the like age for it. Like, it, like for me, like I'm 33, and like most politicians hit their like, pr- like primes in like their 50s. Mm-hmm. So like we're just it's like 35 is a minimum age for a president. So like people my age like aren't hitting the point where like they can be meaningful politicians yet because of the way the system is. Like we literally have to wait for these people to fucking die. That's the problem. Hello? No, no, I hear you. Okay, I'm just making sure I didn't DC in the middle of that. Yeah, like, we're just too young. We need another, like, 10 years. Why until, didn't like, Gen X kick all of these fuckers out? Again, they're they're still too young. They're like, oh, wait, no. Wait, Gen X is, Gen X is after us, after millennials. I think you're talking no, about... No, Gen the... X is before millennials. Are they? Yeah. Mm, I think Gen Xs are just as bad as boomers. Like, they still have the same mindset. That's the problem. Like, boomers... Boomers and Gen Xs are still, like, not quite, like... Like, boomers definitely. But Gen Xs are still, like, not quite in the, in the, the loop of, like... Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, shit or whatever I should say. How to how to say it? So, anyways, I don't know. They're they're still like deluded. They still think that like hard work is all you need. So, anyways, I think that's a podcast. Josh, I'm so sorry. What? Huh? What? At least you got that shiny. Yeah. <laughs> At least I got the shiny. <laughs> At least you got the shiny. <laughs> Thank yeah, we have more everyone. politics and TV talk than anything. <laughs> I mean... Oh, fuck. Get old people out. Ha- women's have decisions, too. Exactly. And... If you're bald, you need a plunger. <laughs> uh, and fucking eat the rich. Okay, that's that's it. And it... Thank you for listening to Black Mike Games Podcast. You know, it says every Thursday on blackmangames.podbean.com. You also subscribe to us in your favorite podcasting app of choice. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Jalen. Or thank you, Josh. Thank you, Ben. Did you call me Alan? I was busy. Yeah, I did. <laughs> wow. I guess he's really excited that the Oilers are win- won their game and moving on to round two. I'm going to start demanding harsher payment at this point, man. If you're going to keep mixing me up with people. Am I going to, to is it going to have to be like tomboy naked tomboys? No. Cause it's going to be like, any... you're going to have to give me like three ninety nine games or something. <laughs> I'm poor. <laughs> you, well, actually, no. get, get them games on sale. Get them games on sale. No, That's no, fine. no. Josh, Josh, you deal with it. Okay. Oh, God damn it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Shit! He's shoving it off on the other coast now. <laughs> I uh, oh, uh, uh, I can give well, you tomboys for days. I cannot give you three ninety nine. <laughs> three dollars ninety nine. You can't buy me a soda even. <laughs> Maybe a soda. They're like two dollars and eighty cents here. Uh, no, 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 no. That's too expensive. Oh my god, you cheap steak. <laughs> what are you talking about? Who are you calling a cheap steak? This is going to get into bloopers, isn't it? <laughs> no, this is in the show. All right, outro it is. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for listening to Black Man Games Podcast. You can listen to us every Thursday at blackmangames.com. Subscribe to us on your favorite podcasting app of choice. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Ben. You did it again! Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Have a good night. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>
So, so wait, hold on. Let me know when you're recording so I can get the joke going in there. All right, cool. We're good. Okay. So, wait, hold on. Let me get this straight, Ben. You think that I'm going to give you payment up for being on the podcast in Tomboy Pictures? I mean, you said it. When have I ever said it? If you deleted a message, I swear to God. I don't think there is a message that says that. In there it chat. is. There it is. It says, I mean, look at Tomboys, a.k.a. <laughs> you're going to bribe me with Tomboy <laughs> pictures. Oh. In order to get me on the chat. Uh, or on the podcast. Well, here's here's some... There's some... Uh, we can go deeper. I love the Anya there at the bottom of that one. It's real good. I wouldn't call you a tomboy. She's just... All right, that's more like it. Oh, hold on. You know, I got one. Look, every man in the world needs tomboys, okay? I'm sure there's a lot of people that would disagree. I mean, those people are wrong and heretics, and they're also taking, they're also, let me explain to you the big government conspiracy, okay? There's a big government conspiracy of it going on with this, okay? I have the papers to prove it, okay? Hold on, I got, I have the papers to prove it. No, you grab, you grab something crinkly and go, I got, I got the papers to prove it. I have the papers <laughs> to prove it. You crinkle it a lot. Okay. Um, the government conspiracy is that they're converting tomboys into lesbians, and thus we're losing tomboys. They're becoming an endangered species. Uh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's that that also can be translated to uh, you want a femboy girlfriend. It's just like you just want a girlfriend with a dick, and it's like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Look, look, for some people, they do want that. For me, not personally. For Josh, yeah, probably. Damn, Josh, okay, you, you like fem girl? You like fem boys? <laughs> or is it girl boy fems? Girl fems? It's boys, boy. it's boys pretending to be women. Oh. Or just female passing men, but have dicks. It's it's just this a, a blurry line because like sometimes they classify femboys or like you this know, girls is with dicks. Been, there's scientific research on this actually. Do you have babe? a folder of this shit? Because <laughs> you just no. you're just not stopping. <laughs> you, is this enough? <laughs> sure, that's enough for now. <laughs> Although I see that you have you have a particular type based on his last three. It's like you like the short hair with big boobs. Uh I'm actually a part of a Discord server and they have a chat that's called um Tomboy Enjoyers. And as a tomboy enjoyer like myself, you know, I look at this and I go, huh. This is perfect. This is perfect for me. I finally found my people. <laughs> It's also where I got a lot of my ship hosts. I'm sorry, but like this whole conversation, it just makes me think of this fucking stupid ass old trailer from 67. Black and white, and the title of the movie is just called Mars Needs Women. Well, <laughs> it's, it's so cheese like you think it is. Well, I also got another. We also have to talk a little bit about this. So 4chan did a scientific method in order to determine how gay tomboys were. Uh huh. The consensus was tomboys are hundred percent straight. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. Dating a girlfriend. Okay, dating a dude is a hundred percent gay. Uh huh. Dating a standard trad girlfriend, that's fifty percent uh -huh. gay because you have to go shopping and bullshit like that. Uh huh. So, 
if you're gay, you're at least 50% gay. If you have a normal husband, you know, uh-huh. if you're dating a super effeminate man who likes to go shopping and shit, that's a hundred percent gay. A hundred percent, hundred percent gay. Uh huh. Now I don't know the measurements for, um, women or birthing people or people with XX chromosomes. I don't know the measurements for that. But I know the measurements for men. And that's that's important for me. So good enough for me. I think the 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 amount that you're gay for femboys is like nineteen percent or something. Eh. It was it was Maybe. a really it was a really funny, really funny pose. I mean, there it's like was they, they that- like literally broke it down. There was one where they were like, it's 2.9% gay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one. 2.9%. Yeah. All I know is that it's not as bad as Vaporeon. Alan's still making fun of me for that, by the way. Oh, the Vaporeon I mean, thing? I, it was literally everywhere. I bet even Ben saw that. Oh, yeah, I saw ben, that. Of course it did. Ben told, yeah. ben told me about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I must have been aware of it and then immediately was just like, like forget it yeah just like remove it away dumb, it's horrible it's dumb internet bullshit whatever yeah I mean I agree but the thing why the the uh, Vaporeon thing stuck around was because like a lot of people like the fucking Eevee line and a lot of people like Vaporeon as well mm. so it's like just just gonna see it. Yeah, the fucking copy pasta for it is it. amazing. Oh yeah, it's just there's so much. <laughs> the guy who probably originally really written it is like, what have I done? Way too much thinking on it. Way too much thinking. Yeah, but people do that shit just for fun. <laughs> Though they create oh, yeah. copy pasta is just a. Uh... Just thinking of the logistics of fucking a Pokemon and like <laughs> because it's a water type, but it's aroused, it'll be incredibly wet. <laughs> incredible. I'm just I'm just happy that they're <laughs> able to admit that that there is a problem with the Pokemon community. I'm just happy for them. No, in lore, it literally says that people marry and fuck Pokemon. This isn't wait, Game Freak new. Wait, what? Yeah, there's there's. Uh, Pokemon, uh, I think it's one of the first ones, or one of the like, second gen or something, one of the Pokedex entries, it talks about how, like, people used to marry Pokemon. Uh. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember there was an entry about that. Uh. Uh. I forget what... Forget what game it was, wasn't Pokemon it? Pokemon like... Diamond and Pearl in, in the yeah. Clan Lava Library... It says Sinnoh ah, yes. Folktale Story 3. There once were Pokemon that became very close to humans. The ones were humans and Pokemon that ate together at the same table. It was a time when they existed and no difference distinguished the two. And the Japanese version says there were the ones there once were Pokemon that married people. There was once were people who married Pokemon. This is a normal thing because long ago people and Pokemon were the same. Right. Right. Yep. So in lore, they're considered. So, so you think in Pal World, uh, they're going to get hit that same threshold? Oh, is that that weird <laughs> slave one or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think it's. I, I, I want them to go so hard into their lore to the point of like, do do people want to have sex with these things? And, and actually answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, Josh! I didn't know you were into bestiality. Oh uh, no, they're the same as people, Josh. It's okay. <laughs> Here's the thing: they make it so questionable in the first place. They make it really question whether they can understand you or not. Look, Josh, I would fuck a fish person. <laughs> I would fuck Tao. Oh boy, are we talking like the Naga from World of Warcraft, or like what? What are, what are we talking here when we talk fish people? Warhammer 40k. Wait, is fish people in Warhammer? They're, Tau are technically fish people, I believe. Oh, okay. I understand. I mean, they're yeah. like very humanoid, though. Yeah. Yeah. But they also have gigantic uh, knockers. 
Some wonderful Bunduka Dukas. I mean, that's probably just the fan art. Gravity swelling Badunka Dunks. Giant mommy milkers. Giant mommy milkers. Jesus Christ. It's fucking, uh, look, look, look. If, you show me those things. I'll say greater good. Join the fucking military <laughs> as quickly as possible. Oh. What's the jellyfish people race from Mass Effect? Elkhorn? Uh, it was... Hanar? Oh, Hanar. Yeah, 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 Hanar. I would, if Hanar wants to get down, I'll get down. All right. Maybe you're right. Maybe Josh is a uh, zoophile. Zoophile, I mean. All right, something to cancel him. I mean, here's the thing. They can talk. That's true. They technically can give consent. Yeah, so I'm like that, that's legal. I'm like, okay. yeah, see, that's the only gray area with Pokemon. It's like, can they actually give consent or not? Like, clear consent. I mean, I guess if they can nod and like understand you and like you can visibly confirm that, I think that counts. But like, it's still kind of a gray area because they can't like verbally give consent. You know what so, I mean? Yeah. Although, if you count me out, he just trained himself to speak English. Yeah, and I think which is some of the more. <laughs> Uh, higher end psychic Pokemon can understand humans pretty well. Can use telepathy, so like, eh? Again, it's a gray area. I'm sure some of them can. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. Just like I just want to see the Dark Universe Pokemon and see how far that goes. I really want that game. By the way, that game looks like a lot of fucking fun. <laughs> what oh, game? the Pal World. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's gonna be fun yeah. when it comes out. Josh is gonna have God. a great time. I, I think I have to buy that day one because I agreed. <laughs> like that's like any other game. I'm like, oh, I can wait. I can wait. I still got some other shit to do. I can wait. But Pal World is just someone literally went forward with the idea of what if but they have guns and they have this and they have, where where is all that shit? And it just went hard into that area. And I'm like, yeah, fucking go for it. I want to see. I want to see this unfold. I want to see your creativity. I want to see where it goes. That's all I want. <laughs> do I catch them? Do I not catch them? Do I gain their trust? Do I bring them home with me? Do I sleep do with I do? them? Do I sleep with them? I love the uh, the on their web page or whatever when they talk about like how you you, you literally go into protected areas and poach them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, we should sink, and then we can talk about VTubers trying to sacrifice blood for the blood god. Oh, dear. sure. Yeah. So, um, sink in three, two, one. <laughs>